There's a new Hitman game in town, and it's good. It's really good. People might be put off by its episodic release structure and always online DRM, but the core gameplay here is the best it's ever been. And to be clear, I'm not saying that just because I got a press code for the game. If this turned out to be as atrocious as Absolution, believe me, I'd be the first one complaining about it. Hitman is finally back, and I'm excited. Even more excitingly, at least for a guy who analyzes games, Game levels, it has one of the coolest, most inventive tutorials I've ever seen in a game. One that happens to be perfect for Hitman in particular. When you start all caps Hitman, the game just starts. There's no long expositional cutscene or any of the other bullshit that you've grown accustomed to in modern games. Words appear on screen to let us know that we're 20 years in the past, a helicopter takes off, and we're playing. By the way, just a tip writers, if there's no scene preceding the jump backwards, your title should say 20 years ago. Go, not earlier, but I digress. The true cold open is a lost art in video games. You need to do a lot of careful tuning if you're just gonna drop the player into gameplay and expect them to run with it, both in terms of writing and stage design. Anyone with a passing interest in level design knows why the first five seconds of Super Mario Bros are genius, but actually replicating that for a different game takes a lot of work. I think the first scene of Hitman manages to do for 3D action games what the first block in Goomba did for 2D play. Platformers. If you know how games work, you probably won't notice, but if you don't, the game tests you on the absolute basics very subtly. Say this is the first game you've ever played. It's unlikely, but bear with me. As you start, Agent 47 is facing a sheer drop off the edge of the helipad. In order to progress, you need to get a grasp on both the movement controls and the camera controls. You have enough space on the helipad to figure out both just by fiddling with the gamepad, but if you try to run off without understanding how they work, there's a good chance you'll you'll miss the small staircase up to the area exit and get stuck. So if you know how to play video games, you can move on without that condescending, now look over there, now look over there tutorial. And if you don't, you have room to figure it out. That's how a tutorial should be designed. But this opening also does a good job setting up the basics of the story. Whoever your character is, they're important enough to be given a solo helicopter ride into the middle of nowhere. And whoever they're meeting here has the pull to station themselves in a seemingly derelict military bunker. Once we're inside, a brief and impressively directed cutscene introduces us to 47 and his future handler, Diana. This is mostly just exposition about who 47 is and where he came from, but it goes by quick and fits into the plot well enough, and the fact that it's framed in an argument tells us a bit about Soder, Diana, and the values of the agency as well. In particular, the fact that Soder lists these traits as positive, a blank slate, antisocial, apathetic and unresponsive, no doubt the boy shows promise, but tells us a ton about the amoral nature of this place and the people who run it. Then the training session itself begins, and the setup for it is genius. The agency has built a fake dockyard and yacht inside an empty missile silo and populated it with actors playing out one of the international contract agency's past missions. Just from this, we can infer a lot about the agency. The level itself will teach us about their modus operandi, but the setting shows that they're influential enough to co-opt an ICBM launch platform and wealthy enough to hire a a bunch of actors to populate it. We can also see the importance they place on their agents. I mean, one guy gets this kind of all-out training program, as well as on their own history. In order to set up this reenactment, they must keep meticulous records and likely record a ton of background noise to serve as lines for their actors. All of this is made clear through context and environmental details, not overt exposition. We don't need a narrator explaining that Agent 47 is an assassin employed by the ICA a wealthy, secretive, multinational organization that carries out hits around the world. We just get it. This is good storytelling, which is genuinely surprising given the last five Hitman games, but if there's one thing Square consistently does well, it's storytelling. And music. The music here is good too, by the way. The objective of this level is pretty straightforward. Get on the boat, kill the guy, get off the boat, don't get spotted. In theory, it seems pretty similar to past Hitman games tutorial missions, like Death of a Showman from Blood Money. But after you learn how to disguise yourself and board the boat, you might notice something interesting. Or you might not. Waypoints will guide you through the stage, and if you're diligent about following them, you might not actually see other pathways, but the ship is a fully explorable space. Unfortunately, it doesn't entirely hold up to scrutiny. Environmental details like the CRT monitor in Ritter's office help to sell the time period, as do conversations you might hear in passing. 
the biggest video Don't rental chain. Me. Have you tried this texting thing? It's really quite addictive. But the illusion is somewhat shattered when you see these characters speaking on modern smartphones. In fairness, though, creating new models and animations just for the tutorial would have been costly. And efforts put in where it counts to make the setting click. If you follow the waypoints, the game will basically hold your hand through this first mission. The two disguises that you need to move forward are carried by characters in conveniently out-of-the-way locations, and the game gives you prompts whenever you might be in danger, so you probably won't get caught unless you deviate from the path or fuck around. The level does a good job of introducing key mechanics one by one as well. First you learn about disguises, then about the special marked enemies who can see through them, and finally you learn how to mitigate the risk posed by those enemies by blending in to divert suspicion. You also learn how to perform stealth attacks and throw melee weapons. It all seems like pretty standard tutorial design, all the way up to the point where you sneak into your target Ritter's office, put one in the back of his head, and try to make your way back off the boat without raising any alerts. But then something interesting happens. Instead of sending you to the next mission, the level starts over, and Diana tells you to do it again, but this time, do it differently. And suddenly this isn't just a tutorial on how to play Hitman, it's a tutorial on how to think about Hitman. Previous Hitman tutorials were built around the assumption that you'd play them once and be done with them forever. It was okay to make them boring so long as you got through the obstacle course and understood how the game worked. Some of them were really lazy about it, setting up a literal obstacle course, 90s game designer for I Give Up. Even Blood Money kicks off with a boring trek through a linear amusement park that no player will ever willingly sit through twice. But with all caps Hitman, they've finally figured out what a tutorial for their sandbox stealth game should be, a smaller, more forgiving sandbox that still rewards creativity and exploration. This first training stage alone has three viable entry points, five wearable disguises, two different melee weapons, a solid half dozen traps that can be used to disguise Ritter's death as an accident, and an array of guns and tools that let you improvise if you feel like it, plus three different exit points. Yet it's all laid out in such a way that it's easy to navigate, even for a new player. There are only two major NPC schedules that need to be kept track of, both of which are very simple, so it's easy to understand what will happen next in the level and plan your route accordingly while you experiment. You can play through the level three or four times and find something new in each run. One run, you can grab a crowbar from the ship's cabin and use it to send a life raft crashing down onto Ritter. In another, you can lace his drink with rat poison and drown him in the toilet as he goes to vomit. It's hardly a robust level by the standards of blood money, but it's already a damn sight better than almost anything in Absolution. It introduces new players to the basics of Hitman, including that addictive replayability, and makes a statement to existing fans. We get it. This is what Hitman is about and the fun is only just beginning. Once you've had your fill of playing around on the fake yacht, there's a whole other fake Hitman level to infiltrate for your final test, a mock Russian base where Soder, the agent testing you, performed one of the ICA's most important Cold War hits. And like the last stage, there's a ton to do here. You can set up some very creative accident kills, lure guards off to their untimely disrobing, put poison in vodka, and even help supposed geniuses cheat at chess. Or you can fuck around and try to kill everyone with a hammer. Your call. Right at the start, you have two potential angles of attack. The obvious path around the back of the cars and the guard post where, if you distract the guard at the gate, you can knock out the other guard and take his clothes. It's still small scale, but it's substantially trickier to keep track of everything. Fortunately, this level introduces a new mechanic to help with that, opportunities. By listening in on NPC conversations, you can uncover a breadcrumb trail of clues that open up creative opportunities to either get targets alone or subject them to unfortunate accidents. This mechanic is a lot more palatable than Absolution's challenges menu, since it still rewards exploration instead of just turning kill opportunities into a boring checklist. Unfortunately, challenges are still very much a part of All Caps Hitman, a design decision I don't agree with at all, but it's not quite as bad when the level design itself is good and the challenges themselves don't give nearly as much away as they did in Absolution. The level does begin to stretch the credulity of the stuntmen playing fake targets conceit a bit. One of the fake kills involves launching your target through the plywood roof of an airport hangar using an ejector seat, which would almost certainly really kill him no matter what safety equipment they have set up. But on the flip side, in this level you're likely to hear some quips from the guards that do help to sell it. Look, I just want to go home, okay? Don't be a dick about this.
the self-aware artifice combined with the very real looking violence gives the whole thing a weird comedic edge, not unlike watching Ralph Wolf and Sam Sheepdog clocking out after a day of bashing each other's heads in. This campy humor is a refreshing change of pace from the po face seriousness that plagued much of Absolution's plot, and the storytelling here is still much stronger. The fact that the ICA was given such an important mission in the height of the Cold War speaks volumes of their influence and legacy. Square even manages to raise the stakes of the plot, despite this being the tutorial. Soder wants you to fail and has made his toughest mission even tougher in order to force that outcome. When you manage to pass it, you know that 47 is a true badass among badasses, but there's the lingering implication that the other members of the agency might have it out for him from now on. These two levels do so much work to help build up Hitman's world. In terms of concept and execution, they are absolutely inspired. And they do a great job of letting you learn and experiment with the game's mechanics on top of that. This is everything a tutorial can and should be, and it's everything a Hitman level should be, too. The way these stages are structured, horizontally oriented playgrounds with increasingly secure, vertically oriented buildings in the middle draw on the same fundamental principles that make Paris one of the best levels in the franchise's history. But I'll talk about that in greater depth once the full game is out and ready to be reviewed. I can't say how good the final package will be until I get my hands on it, but these tutorials and the full level that follows them show that the Hitman team has a strong grasp on what makes this franchise so fun. If you agree or disagree, or if you want to share your stories of your own favorite Hitman missions, leave a comment below and be sure to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one. Or anime stuff. I do a lot of that. And if you enjoyed this level analysis and want to see something else like it, I recommend checking out my breakdown of Gloria's Theater from Psychonauts. Or if you're in the mood for a broader game review, I recently covered Splatoon with my good buddy CJ from What's With Games. Thank you for watching this video all the way to the end, and thank you especially if you're one of the awesome people who supports Mother's Basement on Patreon. You guys make the whole thing worth it, and I'm not just talking monetarily. It's a ton of fun hanging out with you guys on anime nights and game nights, and speaking of those, the schedules for the latest ones have been posted on Patreon, so go check that out if you are eligible to join me for anime or game night this month. As always, this is Jeff Thu, Professional Shitbag, signing out from my mother's basement.